Do you still believe in your business? Is this still the route you want to go? Has your why changed? Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I hope you got a pen or your iPad or wherever it is that you like to take notes because we are going to get super serious. I hope that everyone has had an amazing, wonderful holiday season. Not quite over the hump yet. We've got New Year's Eve, New Year's Day coming up and turning over the calendar. And of course, it's one of my favorite times of year to reflect, to look, to plan, to get excited about the year to come. But this is not for the faint of heart. This is not for everyone. And that's perfectly fine with me. Um, it's not going to be for you, then great. You can listen to something else. You can just bypass it. You can whatever. But I really am talking about talking to you, those of you and myself included. Just always remember that when I'm talking to you guys, I'm also talking to myself. A lot of times we all need to hear all of these things over and over again. We need reminders. We need motivation. We need inspiration. We need someone to give us what I call the slug and a hug, right? Or the kiss and the slap where you need the tough love, but you also need the uh, gentle forgiveness of yourself and others. You need the gentle awareness about what's going on so that you can fix it, so that you can move forward and have a happier, healthier business and life. That's what we're here for, right? To create a business so that you could make yourself stressed out, overwhelmed, and and more um, overwhelmed and stressed than you were before adding that before you added a business. Um, did you start a business and start running it only to build yourself a new prison? Instead of getting away from the nine to five job you might have had, or you're still doing that, you're now realizing that this is tough. That building a job or having a job and having a business is tough. Or if you're building a business that this wasn't as easy as you thought. And I think it's really, really important as business owners to have a time of reflection. In not just a reflection like we're not we're not getting all, you know, super sentimental and things like that or, you know, overly emotional about these things. But we do need to open our eyes and be aware of our year and see where we want to go next year. And so you hear a lot of these podcasts these times this time of year where people are talking about goals and talking about planning and talking about the next year and how everything is going to be rah, rah, so amazingly great. But what if your goal is to slow down and do less. Does that still apply? What if your goal is to back away because maybe you're not sure if this is actually what you want to continue doing? Now we're going to go over some of this stuff so that you can maybe decide that for yourself to figure it out, to figure out if you're doing the right thing, if you're walking in the same purpose that you did before. And this is why the new year or rounding around to the new year is really going to, it's a good time of year to do that. We're ending something and beginning something new and it should feel new and fresh, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it feels like the same old, same old. And so what are we going to do differently so that it doesn't feel like that anymore? Some of the stuff I'm going to share with you today is stuff you've already heard, but stuff we all need to hear on a regular basis, things that we need to be putting in our mind. Because did you guys know that whatever you put in, in your mind, in your heart, in your emotions, in your body, that's what comes out. That's the kind of energy that comes out of your body and out of your mouth and out of your heart and out of your soul are the things that put that you're putting in. So the first question that I want you to just sit with, write it down. You don't have to feel all the feels right this moment or think about it in this moment. But if you have the space for it, the, this mental energy, the space, that's what I mean by giving it space, letting it breathe, letting it live right where it is, is are you still excited? Do you still believe in your business? Is this still the route you want to go? Has your why changed? Just think about these as I ask you this also. What 
are you putting in to your mind, to your eyes, to your ears? What's going inside? Because if you're feeling a lot of stress or a lot of overwhelm or a lot, just a lot, the world is heavy and you have a lot of negative energy, what are you putting into your mind, heart, soul, and eyes? Are you watching a lot of news? Are you watching a lot of TV shows that you enjoy, but they tend to have, you know, like I, I love action and adventure. I'm, I'm one of those types of people too. I don't mind, you know, watching different movies and TV shows where, you know, there's, um, you know, different stuff going on, whether it's like gangsters or just whatever else. But being mindful of your mindset, being mindful of how you're feeling and how you're absorbing the world and a lot of the different things that are going on in the world. Being mindful of these things um, also helps. Like if you're in a state of mind where things are heavy and hard and overwhelming and stressful, and maybe that's affecting your sleep or your mood or things like that, the last thing we want to be doing is putting more negative energy into that space. Instead, what we should be doing or what we could be doing to help ourselves I don't like to use the word should, and so I'm correcting myself as I, every time I say should, because what I should do, what everyone should do, is up to them. I'm not going to tell you what you ought to or what you must do. You have to filter that through the best way for you to be you. But I will say, make suggestions on things that might be affecting you so that maybe if you remove those things or try out removing some of those things that you might actually thrive a little bit better. So forgive me for saying should. I don't mean should. I'm, uh, it's, it's something to just consider, to be curious about, to be interested in, um, but doesn't always mean that you have to go those routes. So please don't hear me saying you should. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you you should or shouldn't do certain things. Of course, unless it's against the policies and regulations of your business. And then I will say you absolutely should not or should do these things based on rules and policies. But like when it comes to your mindset, your entertainment, your uh, free time, your things like that, like I will never tell you what you should and shouldn't do. I can I like to make suggestions and um, you can try those out. Or if it's not working for you, that's great, too. I just want you to think about overall your your input. What are you inputting? into your ears, your eyes, your heart, your soul. What are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you absorbing? Who are you hanging out with? And just like, I don't know if you guys know of like the Marie Kondo um, kind of simple living. I don't, I can't even remember what they call it. Um, the way that she designs and, you know, clears clutter and things like that. Um, I have obviously don't know too much about it, but I do know one of the things that she's always she's always saying when you're going to purge things or get rid of things in your house and simplify is like, does this bring you joy? Does this make you happy in this moment? If the answer is not yes, then that item goes away. So those are for like things. But this can also be translated into your life, into your business, into your relationships, into your daily tasks. Now, let's be real. Making, paying bills does not bring me joy. And I can't just get rid of them because I don't like them. <laughs> However, you can make the experience of doing something that you don't enjoy more enjoyable by just being aware of it. Getting it out of the way. Doing it at a time in your day that is the best time for you. So everybody usually knows their own rhythm of the times they like to get up in the morning or, or are forced to get up in the morning. Um, and, and when they really hit their stride, like I really hit my stride, my most creative time, my best time of, I don't know, just major focus and things at work is between like noon and 5 p.m. Now, some people are just early morning people and they get up and they're ready to just rock and roll. And by the afternoon, they're like toast. Some people are evening people where they just don't hit their stride until 6, 7 p.m. And they can work till 2 in the morning. So whatever your natural rhythm is, um, paying a, pay attention to that and pay attention to the things that you're doing. Because these all these are the things that people aren't talking about that have everything to do with planning and goal setting and having a bigger, better business if that's what you want. But it's a lot about our mind, 
our heart, the energy around us, what we're allowing into our lives, what we are allowing to affect us on a regular basis, and also just mindlessly what we're putting in or not putting in. I mean, I'll give you an example. It's like the radio station in the morning. So uh, you can listen to the radio station in the morning. You can listen to the news, NPR, like, um, or, you know, morning programs. Well, you know, my daughter goes to school at a certain time and there's always this radio program that has pretty humorous things on it. And so we're listening to it, but it's not always age appropriate for her. So I'll catch myself listening to that every now and then. And what I found is that I am a lot more disturbed about what's happening on the radio lately than when I used to be. And so I picked up on that because I thought, oh, this is actually not funny. This is actually really sad because they do some things with relationships and, you know, they call people out on the radio and then they're kind of airing their dirty laundry on the radio station. And yes, it can be entertaining, I'll be honest, because it's just kind of funny to sort of feel like you're a fly on the wall in somebody's, you know, relationship battle or something like that. But as I was listening in, I realized that like, it could be fake, it could be like this made up reality TV or reality radio type show, but it sounded pretty genuine and also was really sad. It was sad to listen to the fact that this man was uh, sleeping with his neighbor and his wife kind of found out and was calling him out and trying to catch him cheating or something like that. And you know, it, things like that. So things that seemingly are harmless and are even kind of entertaining, even though maybe it's a guilty pleasure or something we feel like we probably shouldn't be listening to this, but it's funny, or maybe you don't care and it's awesome and you love it. Regardless of that, think about some of the energy that's coming in when you're doing that. Is this like a negative thing? Is it causing you to feel things or think things or doubt things or wonder about things or be stressed or worried or have anxiety? If those are the things that are that that's causing, then trace it back to the root and eliminate it. I don't need to hear people, you know, relationship issues on the radio. Like that does not bring me joy. And it also is just like none of my business. Like I don't need to take up mental space for that. But there can be things that you want to take up mental space for. Do you want to have more happiness in your life? Do you have more joy? Do you want to have more peace? Do you want to have less stress? Then what can you input into your life? to create more of that space for yourself. So I just want you to be thinking about that because everyone wants the step-by-step, -step, one, two, three, step one, step two, about how to set goals and make plans and you know smash last year's goals, make more money, the end. And I wish, you guys, I wish so much that that were true. <laughs> Life would be so much easier if we could literally just be like, let's follow the steps, follow the formula, and we'll all live happily ever after the end. I mean, Let's be real. That's just not how it goes. So as we're going through some of these exercises today, thinking about those things, keep that top of mind. What are you putting in? Because what you put in is going to come out. And whether that's thoughts, ideas, energy, stress, things like that. So make sure that you're just paying attention to what's going in. Because that's eventually what's going to come out. It's either going to stay there and just kind of hover and become part of you and let it be like that. And I'm not getting all mystic and all spiritual and all things like that, really. I'm just talking. I mean, it's just a simple thing. Is it the more and more? Have you ever been around somebody for a really long time? Um, and then you begin to either talk like them or um, relate to them in a way that you maybe haven't before, you know, things like that. Uh, proximity even is something that we... Um, can pick up on over time. What goes in comes out. It's even the same for your belief system. So I want you to be able to just think about some of the things that you've been putting in lately and see if they're aligning with what you want to feel and how you want to feel and how you want to um, move through your everyday life. Do you want to move through your everyday life with conflict and stress and arguing and, you know, other people's drama always taking up space in your life? Just think about it. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about looking at your year and how to do like a year in review. Like I know they do these things corporately and stuff like that, and I'm not a corporate person. I just take a, a snapshot and maybe this can take an hour or two, but, and I do it like you guys will laugh at me. I'm going to share my process with you, but you're going to kind of probably laugh at my process because it's not... <laughs> formal. It's not, doesn't come from any training or anything like that. It's just what I've done to kind of remember and reflect and figure out 
do I want to repeat this year? Do I want to have a better year? Do I want to have a similar year? Do I want to slow down? Like, what is it that I really want? And the first thing that you really do in order to review your year is to collect the data. So this is simply data collection. There's, you know, certain, so let's, let's put it in business form. Okay. So in your business, the first thing you want to do in your year in review is just to collect some numbers. So, and you decide what numbers you want to collect the revenue numbers or your sales numbers. You can write that down month by month or the total year in review. Um, so that's something that you can do, but maybe you made X number of sales or you sold 5,000 units or um, you launched 12 bundles or something like that. So just write down a few. Um, these are like in corporate, I guess they call them KPIs, uh, key performance indicators. So what is what is your data? What are the pieces of data that you want to collect? Um, maybe it's how much capital you started with, how much capital you have right now, the growth, the start date, uh, collect different data points. And this is super, super important for no other reason than to say, where are you starting from? If you want to write goals and stick with them and achieve them and smash them and do that over and over again in 2022, I've got your back. I want to do that too. And I want to help you, but you have to know where you're starting from. So write some of those things down, collect different data points. If you're not much of a data collector, you need to become one because this is a business skill that we all need. If we want to grow our profit, we need to know what our profit is in order to grow it. Do we not? It's just a point of reference. So this shouldn't be stressful, but if it's new to you, just take your time. Guess what? You don't have to have every single goal that you have written down before January 1st. Did you know this? You can set goals any time you want. Now, if you're going to set an annual goal, then the closest to the beginning of the year that you set that goal, the easier it is to achieve because every day counts, right? So keep that in mind. But the reality is just like diets don't have to start on Monday, <laughs> although we all think they do, you know, everything after the weekend, right? But diets don't have to start on Monday and goals do not have to start on January 1st. So take your time with this, especially if you're busy and you have two jobs and you're doing all these things all together. You want to be able to save some time to do this stuff. You guys, I preach this over and over and over again. And there's a reason because it has extreme value if you put the time in it. Nothing works unless you do. And that's just the slug and a hug that you're going to get from me. So find your points of reference. What data do you want to collect and what data do you want to reference? So if you're just starting out with wholesale bundles and you're getting really excited about that and you say, okay, I'm going to launch two bundles a month every month for 2022. So that means you want to do 24 bundles. Well, how many bundles did you do in 2021? Zero? Okay, so at least we have a data point. If you went from zero, now you're going to go to 24. Sure, that's two a month. But do you have all the training done? Did you do all the training and you're ready really to just dive in and actually do the research process and launch two bundles a month starting in January? Because if you don't start in January, then you're already going to be behind. And this creates this perpetual giving up on goals because people don't take the time to prepare their goals to prepare their life. Like if you're going to launch two bundles a month, the entire year of 2022, that's 24 bundles. But if you don't have your stuff together and you don't have your plan together and you don't have the time carved out and put on your calendar or, you know, you're not intentional about it, January is going to get away from you before you know it. And you're already going to feel behind. So either a, you can dial that back and say, I'm going to do one bundle a month. And if you do more, great. But you're not going to feel so behind if you know you could probably do two and you do one. You know what I mean? Like our mindset and our feeling like really dictates some of the stuff we do. If we feel behind, we're either A, going to rush through everything and just kind of put something up haphazard um, because we just want to get it done and check the box, or we're not going to do it at all and we're going to give in and then we're going to have that defeated mindset and then that's going to spiral out of control eventually. We're just going to give up on it. Oh, I'm not good at this. I can't do it. We might have to regroup. Start small. 
Okay, so we're not going to set the goals just yet. We're just collecting the data first because that's we need to know where we're starting from. So collect some numbers. Maybe it's numbers of bundles, the number of sales made. Maybe it's your average profit. Maybe it's maybe what you want to think about doing is reducing the hours that you work because you're working a ton. That's my goal for 2022. I work a lot. I love to. And that's part of the problem. Um, I do love to. So it's not necessarily a problem, but I also need to balance that with some other things. And so the number of hours I'm working, I'm trying to reduce that so that I can have a little bit better time to take care of myself because I'm not great at that. So collecting just the different data points. How much time do you spend on this? How much money or energy do you spend on this? So number one, before you even get to goal setting and things like that is this year in review is collect your data. Number two is milestones. So both personal and business, um, go through, the, I'm, I'm going to teach you the process in just a second, and this is the silly process I'm talking about, but milestones, okay? So certain sales goals, certain profit goals, maybe you paid off some debt. I, I, I'm going to teach you my process, and you can go through it this way, or you can go through it a different way, but I would love to see some of you guys really doing this. It has so much value. And if you've never done it before, just give it a try, even, even just for 15-minute hustle if you have to. So look at your calendar from January of last year. So if you have a flip calendar, a paper calendar, or if you have a Google calendar, go all the way back to January 2021 and just look at the appointments that you've had. So month by month, maybe just um, put the months on a piece of paper or where, however it is, whether it's your whiteboard or however you like to take notes and go start with January of last year. And then look at those and say, oh my gosh, what were my sales at this time? What was my profit goal? Did I have goals from last year? What were they? Um, did you quit your job? Did you pay off any credit cards? Did you pay off any debt? Did you buy a house? Did you buy a car? Did you sell a car? Did, did you take a vacation? So going month by month, I do this with two things. I do it with my camera roll open and my calendar open. Because I want to see month by month what my year looked like. Because you guys be surprised how much the over 40 crowd. I know you can feel me on this. Like the moment I swear, the moment that you turn 40, like 25% of your memory just like leaves for some reason. I don't know why this happens, but it just feels like all of a sudden I can't remember things the way I used to. So I, I I'm religious about writing everything down because it's somewhere. I wrote it down somewhere and I always remember that look at the appointments that you had or days that you had blocked off for different things, um, whether it's your business calendar. And you can do this business, personal, just however you decide to do it. Specifically, though, this with business, it would be really cool to look at some of the stuff. If you keep spreadsheets, if you look at some of these things, look at the beginning of the year. Look at the sales. Look at some of the month by month. Do you know what your best month was? Do you know what your worst month month was? So this is part of the data collection we talked about. But it's also about milestones. This is milestones I want you to keep track of. Writing this stuff down. We are not, we are hardwired to look at the negative most of the time um, and not celebrating all of the great things that we've done. I mean, most, especially women, tend to point out all of the things that we've done wrong or the bad things or the things we're not good at. We're not really great at walking up to the plate and saying, I'm great at X, Y, Z. Now we could get into the, all the psychology of why, but that's really a reality. A lot of us don't come to the table and say, I'm really great at these top five skills that I have. Instead, we look at it like, oh, I really missed the mark on this. I screwed this up. I'm terrible at that. I'm terrible at this. I mean, does can I get an amen from the people in the back? Is anybody feeling like this besides me? So this is part of going through this year in review is looking at your calendar, looking at your camera roll. What are things that were done? What triggers a memory of something great that happened? I want you to write down or take note of a year in review. If we had to make a picture calendar and you had to pick one image from your camera roll from one time of every year, this one month of every year, this whole year, what would that look like? So look at that for your business too. What were your sales in January, February, March? Did you launch any bundles? Did you launch any new products? Did you stop doing RA and start doing wholesale? Like what were your milestones, big or small? And let me tell you this, 
Look for the small ones. Did you jump from $1,000 a month to $1,500 a month consistently? Do you know the percentage of jump that is? I mean, if you're going from $1,000 a month to $1,500 a month, that's what, 75%, 50% increase, 75% increase? I don't know. I'm not good at math. The idea there is like you went from this much to that much. That's a milestone. That's to be celebrated. You know why? Because that doesn't happen on accident. You put the work in to do that. So it's time for you to have a little party. And this time we ain't having a pity party. We're having a real party. We're going to celebrate ourselves. We're going to celebrate the milestones that we've hit this year, no matter how small. You know why? Because progress is still progress. And we are going to celebrate it. So I want you to just write it down. Even if no one else sees it, get something pretty. And something that you feel celebratory about, like the good stationery or, you know, like when you pull out the good china when everybody's coming over for dinner or something like that and it hides in the back of the cupboard. No, pull that out for yourself and do it now to say, yes, I've accomplished a lot this year. Maybe and, and see, we're already we already try to justify it in our minds right now. We're already saying, oh, I wanted to do so much more, but no, there's no but there's no it, there's no oh you know, that that whole self-sabotage talk that we have, that we try to minimize our accomplishments, big or small. So did you take a vacation? Did you do something special? Did you pay for summer camp for the kids um, with your Amazon money? Whatever it is, look at your camera roll, look at your calendar, write some of this stuff down and look at your milestones. Look at them. In business, if you even launched one bundle, do you guys, do you know how many people take Wholesale Bundles course and never launch a bundle for whatever reason? Maybe they're fear. Maybe they decided it's too much work. Maybe they decided that they just don't understand or they're just so scared that they won't pull the trigger. So guess what? If you launched a bundle, you did that. And we're not comparing to everybody else and what they're doing and what they're not doing most of the time. What we are doing is just looking at our own milestones and celebrating them. And rightfully so. So that's the second step of your year in review. Now, I'm going to allow space. <laughs> I'm going to allow space for the what went wrong. Because let's be honest, things went wrong. Things go wrong. Zealous this year in a specific goal that I had. Um, it kind of came up abruptly. Um, and I tend to do this. And so I'm going to tell you the mistake that I made and then how I have self-corrected since then because it was expensive and it was pride swallowing and it was difficult. Um, and I make mistakes just like everybody else does. I, I am an idea person. I get really um, excited about things in the beginning. I have excellent follow through. So I'm always following through and I will bring an idea from beginning to end. But I also like to, I'm not scared of last minute. Um, which can sometimes bite me in the rear. And um, we had a private label, uh, we had our private label product launched this year, a year later than it should have because of pandemic. Um, and so we launched it in the beginning of January. It was very, very slow in getting started, but in the spring it started to pick up. And I started looking for opportunities that, that I might display or, or show or do like a vendor show or something like that for our product. And I found this amazing vendor show that also happens to be a country music festival locally here every summer. And I had never been to it, but I also knew that my product would be perfect for this setting. And so I filled out the application without even thinking. I mean, of course, I had to think about it. There was a lot of things to put in this application and we had to put our website and our product pictures and like all this different stuff and kind of fill it out. But I honest to goodness, in the back of my mind, did not think that they were going to accept us as a vendor. Uh, I figured they had that was a big, you know, 60,000 plus people. And of course, with COVID, we weren't sure how many people were even going to be there, but it was open and, you know, things like that. So um, lo and behold, about a week after I hadn't heard from them, I figured it probably was going to be nothing. It was also six weeks before the event, which doesn't seem like not it, it seemed like enough time until you realize what's all involved and what has to be done if they say yes, which unfortunately for me, I like I've been rushing decisions and just filled out the application, didn't think much about it and hit submit and 
they came back and said, sure, you're accepted. No problem. Pay this money, do this, do that. And then all of a sudden we were like, now we are vending at a booth for a three day festival and we've never done this before. And OMG, all the things we had to do. So some other things in my business kind of fell to the wayside while I was focusing on this very, what seemed very urgent and new and different experience, which was fantastic. But I also did some basic math and basic math will tell you that your average conversion rate for people coming and seeing products and things like that, even if it's 1% of the people that visit by 1% is a very low conversion rate. But the possibility of 60,000 people walking by your booth two or three days in a row, um, you know, that 1% even still would have been approximately... 50 to 100 units. I mean, how many people is that? I don't know. 60,000 people. 6,000 would have been 10%. So 600 would have been about 1%. So I thought that we should probably have that many units on hand um, just in case because you don't want to sell out. You're not allowed to close your booth even if you sell out. There's all these rules. Well, I decided that we needed at least 300 and we didn't even have that many in stock. So we had to place this whole new order, which means that we had to order minimum order quantities, get them from China, get them here, all that stuff. Well, y'all know supply chain issues this year, right? Well, this is the one thing that didn't have a supply chain issue. And we were able to order them. And although they didn't come at the same time as the festival, we had them in stock. But the festival had just didn't, we didn't sell the way that we wanted to. It was a brand new product. We had to like just display it, do what we had to do. The price point was a little higher than most people are used to um, at places like this. And so it was just great exposure. We had a great experience. I would not, I would not, I don't regret going. Uh, I don't regret that. What I do regret is, is spending all of that extra upfront money thinking overzealously that we were going to just automatically convert that 1% and we were gonna need three to 500 units on hand. We did not need that many. We did not need nearly as many. As a matter of fact, we barely broke even for this particular thing. We learned a ton. We are going to, Lord willing, go back next year and do the same thing and do some things differently. But in the meantime, that took a lot of capital out of our pocket to make that work. And I was just convinced that I didn't want to be, you know, I didn't want to make sales and then not be able to send somebody their product for two months. I wanted to be prepared. So we pre-ordered some of the stuff and had to spend all this extra money up front. And then we had to get a storage unit because we didn't have the space to store all the stuff. The prep center couldn't store it. We don't have storage here at the house anymore. So my failure really was being a little bit too overzealous, being too, too positive, I suppose, and thinking, I'll just do this really well. Well, I guess there's good news and bad news, right? I mean, the bad news was we, we barely broke even. We barely made any. We definitely didn't profit off of the event. Um, we learned a lot. So that was it was a worthy cause. I don't have regrets about it, but I really wish I would have just waited to see if we really needed that. We could have done that on the opposite side of that. The supply chain issues really happened after that for all kinds of industries. And so we're really glad we got the product when we got it because we ended up selling a lot more for Q4 than we thought we were going to. And had we not ordered them then, we wouldn't have had any left and we probably wouldn't be able to get them because right now they're backed up for months. I don't think that they could even get us a new set of supplies right now or what we need to create our bundle. Um, I don't think they would be able to produce that and get it shipped here that fast. It has to come sea freight because of its size and things like that. So hindsight, that was actually a great decision. But in the moment and the rest of the financial burden that it created for our business from the months after that was really rough to deal with. And I know it was my fault. I know that I could have stepped back and took a breath and did things. So I self-corrected. After that moment and just some reflection of what went right, what went wrong, we all kind of talked about the event and what happened. Um, I also realized that I made a hasty decision that I shouldn't have made. And so because of that, now I've set myself a rule. And so this is the self-correcting. This is why we look at what went wrong. And so I'm going to tell you how, um, how I do it at least, and then um, help you filter through that. Because we look at what went wrong so that we don't repeat mistakes, so that we don't 
lose money so that we don't run in fear all of the time and say, oh, I'll never do that again. Or yeah, I could have said we're never doing a festival again. That was awful. And it was this and it was this and there was rain and there was, you know, we didn't sell the way we wanted to and all this different stuff. Or I could look at it and say, you know what went really wrong is just the one thing that I made a hasty decision. And so now I've put a rule around myself that anything that involves a significant amount of money, um, I'm going to wait 24 hours at least before I make a decision. Nothing is going to go wrong in 24 hours. No one is going to say, I'm sorry, we can't accept your applications. I mean, yeah, deadlines are deadlines. But like, let's be real. Even after a deadline, if someone reached out to you and said, okay, this is you could pass or fail either way. I'm not going to make hasty decisions anymore. And that was a direct result of looking back and looking at what went wrong. So when we're looking at what went wrong, there's a, there's a couple of boundaries we want to put on this. First of all, we can nitpick everything that went wrong for every single thing. Even if you have a bundle that sold out, you could say, oh, I didn't buy enough. That went, That's what went wrong. Sure. If you tend to be a negative Nancy kind of person, no offense to the Nancys in the world, <laughs> um, but if you tend to be a negative person and always looking at the negative side, then these are the boundaries we need, right? Um, the maximum is three things that can go on this list. Three, that's it. You can pick for, from the last 12 months, you can pick three things that went wrong. Big things or little things, but something that impacted you in some way that you remember those are the three things I don't want to do. We all need improvement. And this is a really important step of this. This is not, this is fact finding. This isn't judgment. This isn't self-loathing. This isn't you should have, would have, could have type stuff. Although those are things we need to reflect on. I made a bad decision. I should have took taken more time to think about that. But I have learned something for my future is to set that 24-hour boundary around myself to say, I will not make a decision like this until I have at least this amount of time to think about it, maybe talk about it with my husband. I pray over my decisions, and then, you know, I'm giving it a little bit more time. And I have not practicing that very well, so that's my uh, what went wrong. But things we, we all need to be improving, period. That's just growth. That's human growth. That's business growth. We all should be in growth mode. But the only things that can go on this list are things that we can control. So I can, like what went wrong with the story I shared with you about ordering too much product and tying up all that money now that's in a storage unit. Can you tell I'm still annoyed by that? <laughs> it's in my voice, I can't help it. Um, but things we can control. I could have controlled that. I could have made a better decision. And uh, this could, could, this is a problem that I'm dealing with the consequences of my own actions. And I fully own that. I don't like it, but I fully own it. But your what things that went wrong on your list cannot be that Amazon, here's something else that went wrong on the list. Um, Amazon, uh, I got a bad review for a product that Amazon's fully responsible for because they sent a used product from FBA that we don't sell used products. All of ours are brand new manufactured. Um, but they accepted a return sent it to a customer and that customer left a terrible review with pictures saying this was used and dirty and broken and blah, blah, blah. And they were really upset. Amazon will not remove this review, even though it's their fault. Um, but that's outside of my control. I did everything I could to all the processes, all the communications, all the everything, even the Bezos emails, blah, blah, blah. And they just refused to, to take responsibility or to do that or to respond to me in any sort of way. So I just have to accept that. I have to move to acceptance and I can let it let me make me mad. I could quit Amazon. I can do all kinds of things with that. The reality is it's not in my control. So I have to let it go. I have to be proactive, which is what I did. I did something to fix it so the problem will never happen again. Um, and that the reality is, is just fact finding. I'm not judging myself or them or whoever else or self-loathing. I'm just saying that this is something that went wrong. Yes, but it's not in my control. So that's not allowed to go on the list. What is in my control is how I fix that problem. And how I fixed it was I was proactive. Now we have a safety seal going on all of these products so that the customer, if the customer gets it, it says the safety seal has been broken, please return it immediately um, for a replacement, whatever else. So at least at this point, the customer will know that safety seal is broken, something is wrong. And so we were proactive because Amazon won't fix it. So it's not the best solution in the whole world. Didn't remove the review, but it fixed it. So moving on. So what goes wrong on the list? There's only three things maximum. And the boundaries are that are things that you can control. Things that you 
allowed or caused to go wrong in your business. I mean, we have to be honest with ourselves. We cause our own problems sometimes. <laughs> Maybe you procrastinated on something and then you didn't get your Christmas bundle in on time. And of course, you didn't make any money on that because you just you were procrastinated and you didn't do what you were supposed to do. You can own that. And you don't have to like punish yourself for it or anything like that. Just own it. Admit that it was a bad decision and maybe write one suggestion down of how you can change that. So for me, made a bad decision, spent too much money in haste, hoping that hoping that we would do something better than that. And we didn't and tied up all that money. And now I have to deal with the storage unit. So I've accepted that and I'm moving on. And as those are selling, the storage unit's almost empty. And as soon as they're sold out or sold, sold, sell a little bit more of it, we can get rid of that storage unit and start all over. So did I die? No. Did my pride and my ego get hurt a little bit? Absolutely. Where I was a little too overzealous? Right. Did I make a hasty decision? Yep. Owning it, accepting it, moving on. I'm forgiving myself for that. I made some mistakes. They weren't pretty. But that doesn't have to dictate the rest of my life or the rest of my business. And neither it does for you. So what went wrong? Look at three things only that went wrong or pick the top three things that went wrong, that they were in your control and make one suggestion to yourself on how you can not repeat those mistakes. Okay, this is part of our year in review. So first, collecting all those data points. Second, the milestones, the great things, the happy things, the things that you are very pleased with, or even just the small milestones of growing a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. And then what went wrong? What went wrong? Inside of your control. Don't judge yourself for it. Own it. Maybe apology note. Like literally on a sticky note or something, I'm really sorry that I mean, like in that that person, I'm really sorry that I made a fast, hasty decision that cost our company thousands of dollars. This is what I'm going to do to not do that in the future. I'm going to take 24 hours to think, pray and mull over decisions that cost more than two thousand dollars. Sincerely, Kristen. There. I apologized. I made it a wrong right by admitting my fault and saying what I was going to do to prevent that problem happening in the future. And I can let it go. Right? I know some of you guys have heard of this part before. Now we're at a point where we can look at some of the data. We can look at what went right with the milestones, what went wrong with some of the mistakes that we've made. And now we're going to look at what we really want. That's called a goal, right? There's a goal. Say your goal is to, I'm not reasonable goals, right? Okay, what's reasonable? Put it in boundaries. And so that you've heard of smart goals, right? It's like um, the simple and uh, measurable you have to have some sort of timeline on them, you know, things like that. Like, I don't know all the SMART goals. I don't really study that way. I just kind of, this is, I'm going to tell you what I do with goals and it's going to be the stop, start, continue. And we're going to go through that in a minute. Those of you guys that are in the hub, you're very familiar with stop, start, continue because we do this every quarter. And um, it's just something that I cram down your throat because it's helpful if you follow it. So we don't set goals traditionally, but yes, you want to know First of all, to set a goal, to set a reasonable goal, what do you want? What do you want? Um, and this can be most of the time what we want is seemingly so far away from what, where we are that it's scary to say it out loud. And some of us are super audacious and we want to get like, oh, I want to four times my sales this year. Okay, great. Do you have four times the money and time and energy to spend on that? Or are you going to hire someone to help you work smarter um, because you've got your plate full already? I mean, how much capacity do you have to increase in all of those areas? Because in order to increase your revenue, you have to increase your capital. You have to put more money in. You're in a product-based business. If you're in a service-based business, then the capacity you have to increase is your time, not your money. Because it, if I have to sit here and, you know, <laughs> I laugh, I was going to say, um, if I got paid for this podcast, which I don't. <laughs> um, but if you got paid to do a podcast and you wanted to get paid more to do a podcast, then guess what? You're going to have to make a better podcast or a longer podcast or more podcasts, right? You have to increase something. And so if you want to make more revenue, you're going to have to increase either your profit margin or 
the capital that you're spending on said inventory in order to increase it. It's just, you know, some basic, simple math. So whatever it is, what do you want? And if you guys don't have Dream Big, Step Small, which is my book, then the best way you could just go get the book. Um, you can get a signed copy on mommyincome.com. You can get a copy on Amazon. You can listen to it on Audible. I suggest the actual paperback, though, because the steps in there, um, you there's small steps in each and every chapter at the end, suggested ones and steps from the book and different things. But the most important thing about the book is the inner perfect world and how you create your inner perfect world. And I've done some episodes on this on the podcast, so you may have heard this before, but it's something that you don't just do one time. My in a perfect world from 10 years ago is different than it is now. Although there's some similarities, there there's some differences. I have grown up, I've matured, I've changed, my wants and needs have changed. And this happens a lot. So we need to revisit our in a perfect world on a regular basis, at least once a year, maybe once a quarter. I mean, if you're super dialed in to your own desires and needs and wants and whatever. And I know this is very difficult for women, which is why it's there, because we need to have this land where we can dream up our best days and what we want and what I want our lives to look like and all that stuff. But it's for everyone because you're in a perfect world is what do you want? If you could create a perfect world, what would it look like? How would you execute these things? So start, stop, and continue. So in order to figure that out, looking at your year in review, what are you going to stop doing? What would you like to? And even if you're say, you're not going to write these as goals, I just want you to explore it. Be curious. Be interested in your own thing. What drives you nuts? Asks that you hate business that you're just like, oh, I have to do X, Y, Z today. And it's just like, oh, most of the things in an Amazon FBA business can be outsourced. Prep, sticker peeling, um, if you're doing retail arbitrage and those things, even retail arbitrage can be outsourced. If you give uh, somebody uh, parameters and something to scan with and things like that, you could, they could, you could outsource this. But what drives you crazy? What tasks do you not like to do at all? What are you to stopping? But the answer is why? What's it cause inside of you that makes you want it to go away? Like, what is it? You're just like, oh, I would rather do anything but tape boxes. To where some people love that. Some people like that tactile, like Tetris of boxes where they're putting everything in there and everything fits and it's nice and neat and it's hands on and all that kind of stuff. Great. And there's some of us that love the creative process and don't love the tactile processes. So write down why you don't like those things. I mean, like, I'll be real. Like, I hate taking out the garbage. Why? Because it's smelly and because it's gross and there's like leftover food and there's just like a combination of stuff and it's smelly. And oh, did I mention that it's smelly and I have to go all the way back outside and now it's winter and I have to put shoes on or boots on and go outside in the cold, lift up the thing that my husband uses ratchet straps for because animals get into the garbage. So you have to undo that, then throw the garbage. It, it's just a pain. And did I mention it's smelly? <laughs> I already gave you the why. So in your business, what is it that you don't like doing and why? And then take a step to stop doing that. And if it's prep, get a prep center. It might cost you some money. <gasps> business costs money? Can you believe that? Then you can afford it, okay? So I get it. Everything costs money. Anyway, continue on that list of milestones and looking at your year in review and looking at your calendar and looking at the tasks and looking at how far you've come this year, what is something you want more of? I want to do more of that. So looking at your calendar, maybe you looked at a calendar and you went on vacation in May and you were like, oh, I want to do more of that. That was such a fun trip and I loved it. Okay, I'll, July, that was July for me. I want more July in my life. <laughs> of course we all vacations, right? But I'll also want more of. 
I want more of the bundles that I made for Christmas that hit the warehouse, sold right away, and sold until they sold out. I'm very proud and excited of those Christmas ones that I did this year. They gave me a new sense of excitement and possibility for the new year. And I thought of about six different bundles in a similar category that I could use for different holidays. It fired me up. Number one, it did well. Number two, uh, it was a little bit last minute, so a little bit was retail arbitrage and a little bit was wholesale. And that was mostly because of supply chain issues and because I did it last minute. So, But I was happy about that. So I want more of that. But what in your camera roll, what in your business, what on your calendar causes you to say, I want more of that? Write it down. And write down an emotion or a thought or energy or some sort of word that you feel when you write that down. So when I think about that bundle I just told you about, I get really excited because it's for children and I feel like it's going to make them so happy. And with customers obviously agreed because they, I sold out um, of those and I'm very happy about that. And it's just making somebody's life happy and I, I like it. So it, it was creative. It was fun. It was a really different bundle for me to put together with totally different stuff that I'm not used to. And that also is new and fun to me. So I want more of that. It makes me feel excited and motivated to keep doing it. So that's something continue. And then there's start doing. So looking at those numbers that we talked about, the data collection that we had, what are some of those numbers that you maybe you want to start doing? Maybe Maybe you haven't started bundles yet and you really want to put your first bundle together. Give yourself six and every week do one of the tasks, do something that kind of moves you forward to that bundle. Even if it was, I just got off the phone with a client um, this past weekend and was able to, well, it was a couple weekends ago, I guess. Um, and she just was really confused about something and I wanted to help her through that. And her goal was just to get her bu first bundle up, even if she didn't sell any. She just wanted to do the process, which that's a great student because that's what I teach people to do. You don't always have to make tons of money off your first bundle. It's just getting used to the process. Once you know how to list, once you know D10 exemptions, once you got your bundle brand, things like that, then you can get all the logistics out of the way and then start to be creative. So what something you want to start doing? What's exciting to you? And this doesn't have to be business related, although I would love to see you having a business list and a personal list of some of these things. Um, like, what are you going to start doing? Like, everybody's thinking about new habits for January. We're always going to, we're going to stop eating so much sugar. and We're going to start exercising. Okay, yeah. Like, those aren't, you can put those on the list if you want to. Go ahead. They're on my list every single year. And I slightly improve every single year. So, hey, I'm moving the needle and that's all that matters. Um, what are you going to start doing in your business? Is it bundles? Is it private label? Is it just maybe you're going to open your own um, Etsy shop or a Shopify? Are you going to start selling on Walmart this year? Have you been afraid of that? So thinking about what you're going to start doing, what causes you to think, gosh, I wish I could do that or that sounds like fun fun are you having in your life right now? How much fun is to you? What is you? What sounds like fun? What seems like a good time? Do you like having a good time? I mean, I feel like we need more of good times in our life, right? What gets you curious and excited and wondering, oh, wouldn't it be cool if... In business, wouldn't it be cool if? So as you're thinking about the stop, start, and continue process, focus in on just, this is going to blow y'all out of the water right here, right now. You're going to be like, oh, what did she say? Start with one. One goal. I dare you. I dare you to set one goal for your business this year and follow it to completion. I dare you. Is it increasing your revenue by 25%? Maybe you're going to increase your um, ASP, your average selling price by $10. You're going to increase your profits. Maybe you're going to pay off debt. And that is the whole reason you're running a business so that you can pay off debt. 
maybe it's reduce all of your costs or or you're going to launch a wholesale bundles, whatever it is that you're going to do. One goal for 12 months. Focused on just one goal. Every decision, every product, everything that you do should align with the goal and you should be able to say, my goal, let, let's just set one for now. My goal is to increase my profit by 25%. So not sales, but profit. I want to increase my profit by 25%. So now that I have that one goal of the whole year, that goal is to every every decision comes underneath that. So if you're looking at product to buy and it's not going to increase your profit by 25%, the answer should be no. I'm not doing that. There's no room for that. My goal is this. Is this aligning with that goal? Yes or no. It really simplifies things. Simplifies. Yes or no. It aligns with the goal or it doesn't. And of course, you can give yourself a little bit of flexibility and room in that. But I dare you to try it even for three months and say no to everything that doesn't align with that one goal. But your goal has to have that purpose and that why. Why do you want to increase your, your profit margins by 25%? Because I want to make more money. Because I got bills to pay. Because I want to go to Hawaii. Because I want to take the entire month of July off. And in order to do so, I need to be paid for July. So what do I need to do between now and then to take an entire month off? Well, I need to plan. I need to prepare. I need to increase my profits. I need to be able to save a little bit of that money for six months so that I can take a month off. Okay, if everything doesn't align with, do you want to take July off? Yes or no? Yes, I do. Okay, what decision are you making in order to take off July of this year? Is this decision you're making or this appointment you're taking or this time you're taking off or this money you're spending getting you closer to your goal or farther away? And as you pick your goal, what will it take in terms of investment of both time and money in order to get to that goal? What kind of output or input do you need in order to get there? Example, in order to inc increase sales or profits by 25%, I need to know the breakdown of my sales. I need to know if you want to increase your profit, you have to know what it is. So how many sales per month am I making now? What's my average profit margin right now? What is taking the most of my profit? Is it my cost of goods? Is it Amazon fees? Is it shipping? Is it prep center? Is it my own bottleneck? Where could I increase profits? And sometimes you can increase profits just by analyzing your expenses and realizing you spent too much money on uh, office supplies or training, or you spent too much money on the inventory you just had to have that's still somehow sitting in your back room that you haven't sold yet just because you felt like you had to buy it. So really analyze those types of things. How many more sales do you need in order to get to that point? And is that possible and doable? The answer is always yes. It just de depends on what you're going to sacrifice. What are you going to do differently in order to make space and hold space for your new goal? Ready to think about that and think about these things because it boils down to what do you want? Why do you want it? Because just make just wanting more money isn't enough. Sometimes we just get comfortable and we realize that like, yeah, even if we're struggling to pay the rent or the mortgage or the car note or we want, our car is broke down and we need to save up some money to fix it or whatever the case may be, or maybe you have mountains of debt and you just feel like, oh, well, I'll just pay the minimum payments and I'll just sit here and watch Netflix. Look, I ain't judging for that. I'm just saying that your why needs to be something you really believe in. There was a time I was in $50,000 of consumer debt, not houses and cars, but straight up credit card borrowing. Definitely not proud of that, but I knew that that felt like a very heavy chain for me. And instead of sitting around and watching Netflix, I chose to work extra hours to pay for that debt that I racked up. Because number one, I felt like that was the most responsible thing to do. And number two was because I knew that there was freedom at the end of that chain. I knew that if I worked hard now, 
that I could pay those bills off and then I wouldn't have to rack them up ever again. I had a choice. And was it easy? No, it was hard. There was a lot of discipline, a lot of things that I wanted to do and places I wanted to go and things I wanted to buy that I sacrificed in order to do that. But now I realize something more important that those things were a learning phase at the time. I realized that it was important to me and I found other things to do with my time and energy than to spend money on stuff I probably didn't really need. And honestly, we got into debt because of we had to because we were, had no income and we were basically buying groceries and I was paying the electric bill on the credit card and, you know, things like that until it kind of got crazy out of control. And this was years and years ago um, during like our foreclosure time and all that stuff. But all that to say that that there was sacrifice involved. It wasn't just tons of extra income I could just throw at this debt. No, it was it was a sacrifice. It was hard. Um, but now it's not hard because it's over. So things are going to be in the moment. Is, is it, is it going to be worth it? It's always worth it. The hard work is worth it, but you got to do the work because you don't get the reward for something that you didn't earn. Want the best for you. That's my purpose. That's my why. That's why I sit in front of this camera and this microphone every single week. Because it brings me joy to see all of you succeeding, even if it's baby steps, even if you're like, well, I'm not there yet, but I'm closer than I've been. I was closer than I've ever been. You know, I hear people doubling and tripling their sales and I hear other people saying, well, it didn't work out as well for me and I had to take a full-time job, but I'm still at it and I still believe in my goals. I still believe in my dreams and it's going to happen and I'm still working at it. Whatever it is for you, does it bring you joy or will it bring you joy in the future because we have to have some of that now we have to have some of it now you should have some of the pleasure and joy and excitement of knowing that you're working hard for something that's not here yet it's almost like preparing for the holidays right you get really excited about getting gifts and that special gift for someone and you wrap it up and you put it under the tree and you wait and wait and wait until christmas so that you can finally give it to them be real. Let that be real for your journey, that you're slowly anticipating that moment when you realize that all of your hard work is really paying off and you really are getting the momentum that you wanted to get to. I wish I could show you this image right now. I don't have it, but I have it in my mind. Um, it's like a meme and you sh it shows this guy that's digging in a diamond mine and he literally, it shows him walking away after he dug this big, huge giant hole. And what we see from the outer perspective is that the diamond was literally three inches on the other, this huge diamond mine. And what he was looking for was literally three inches beyond where he quit. And yet we look at all of the work we've put in up until this day. And we think, oh, I'm just giving up. I'm just not there. I've been working at this for so long and I'm just not getting the results I want. And you throw in the towel two seconds before your arrival. And it's just something you want to be able to reevaluate. Now, if you're going to pivot and do something else and, you know, those are those are that's a whole different conversation than giving up simply because it's hard or because you just quit believing in yourself or quit believing in the, the truth of, of the work that you're doing or that you can't somehow improve. As you go into the new year, as you're starting to think about what you want for your life, and for your business and what you're going to start doing and stop doing, collect the data, celebrate the milestones, be aware and examine what went wrong, and be forgiving of yourself. And then set one goal. Be intentional about that goal. Be focused and do your best to align all of your choices with that one goal. Whatever that is for you, that one goal. Just say, you know what? I accomplished my goal this year. My goal was to blank, whatever that is. Um, and so that's something I just wanted to share with you and have you reflect on it. And you guys can respond at any time. You can send me an email, Kristen at mommyincome.com. You can comment below this video. You can comment on the podcast. You can leave a wonderful review, whatever it is. Feel free to share your one goal. Feel free to share what you 
stop doing, start doing, and continue doing. It helps you be accountable. You're 10 times more likely to hit a goal that you write down and share with someone else. That's my addition. When you share it with someone else, someone that cares, eventually they're going to ask you, hey, how's it going with that goal? Are you getting there? Are you close? Do you need help? Oh, what's the problem? You know, holding yourself accountable. So guys, I know that you could be anywhere else doing any other thing, listening to any other person in this moment. And I don't take that for granted. Thank you so much for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. If you enjoy this show, share it with somebody. Let them know this is one of your favorites. I love the shout outs. I love to be able, because I always want to help people. And the more people that know about the podcast and can listen to it, the more people I can help. So if leave a review, share it on your social, send it in an email to someone, get it your screen grab and tag me on Instagram, whatever it is. I would love to have your feedback and your support with the podcast. I will see you in the new year. Have a happy new year, everyone. Set your goals, celebrate your wins, and let's get moving. See you guys same time, same place next year on the Amazon Files.